The scent of old paper hung in the air. A mix of leather and dust, heavy with the weight of untold tales. My name is Elias Reed. For as long as I've lived, I've been a devourer of stories. Not the kind you find in neat rows on bookshelves, but the quiet ones held in the curve of a smile, the lines etched on a weathered face. I see those, and my mind fills with narratives of its own. That's how I landed this peculiar job as an archivist at the Library of the Unwritten. They call it an archive, but that hardly does it justice. It's a labyrinth carved from some ageless stone, impossibly high shelves reaching toward shadowed ceilings. There are no windows, no clocks to mark the time of day. The only light comes from the warm orbs floating along the stacks, casting long shadows between the aisles and the books, row upon row of empty volumes, thousands of them, pristine spines and blank pages, whispering of untold possibilities. Until recently, I was doing my usual rounds, a worn ledger in hand when I noticed it, a single line of text snaking across a blank page, appearing more like ink bleeding through than words deliberately set down. Curiosity outweighed my initial caution. I traced a finger along the letters, and a shiver slithered down my spine. These words weren't familiar. They were written in a flowing script I'd never encountered, and yet I understood them. More books began to change. Some held a single word, others a complete paragraph, each in a different hand, a chorus of phantom authors filling the aching silence of this place. But what did they mean? Why were they appearing now? My pulse quickened, not with fear, but with a heady mix of wonder and something like exhilaration. The library of the unwritten was no longer a silent tomb, and I had a front row seat to whatever was stirring within its heart. The next morning, I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd stumbled across something extraordinary. My skin prickled with an almost electric energy, a mix of excitement and the kind of nervousness that tightens your stomach. Despite a night of fitful sleep haunted by the images of those ghostly words, I rushed through my morning routine, eager to return to the stacks. The library was as still as ever, the floating orbs painting the shelves in their soft glow. I headed directly to the section where I'd first found the change, my breath catching as I saw the transformation had spread. No longer just a line or word, entire pages were now filled. Some flowed with elegant calligraphy, others a frantic scrawl. Ancient symbols danced alongside languages that set my teeth on edge. Yet, the meaning remained elusive. It was like hearing a symphony of unknown instruments. The melody, beautiful, but wholly alien. I needed answers, but where to even begin? I must have looked like a madman those next few days, hunched over books, muttering to myself. There were no records, no catalog to explain the library of the unwritten, only neat rows of leather and parchment waiting patiently as if guarding their secrets with an ageless tenacity. Sleep was a luxury I couldn't afford. Every moment stolen for rest, filled with dreams of words scuttling across the pages like spiders. I started keeping a journal, a frantic attempt to document the ever, shifting texts that now bloomed across nearly every open volume. And then there was the night the whispers began. Not loud, but the faintest of murmurs carried on the stillness. The rustle of phantom pages, turning just out of sight, it made the hair stand on my neck. I was no longer simply an observer. The library was alive, or at least awakening. One evening, my scribbled notes lay forgotten as I paced along the aisles, following the whispers. They led me to a section I rarely visited, the air here thicker, almost heavier, a single book lay nestled in the shadows, not empty like the others, but bound in worn crimson leather. Yet, the pages weren't filled with text. Instead, an image shimmered across the page, a towering tree with roots sinking into darkness, its canopy a tapestry of stars I didn't recognize. As I stared, the tree twisted, branches morphing into grasping, skeletal hands. 
My heart thudded so loudly it drowned out the whispering. I snapped the book shut. Enough. My mind was churning, trying in vain to digest what I'd been seeing. The writing, the images, the sense that the very fabric of this place was changing. Where would these stories lead? What forces might they unleash? Fear had a new taste, old parchment, and a hint of iron. My mind raced, but my body seemed frozen, as if the crimson book now lying innocently on the floor might snatch me into the darkness it held. Shaking myself free of the stupor, I did the only sensible thing when confronted with the inexplicable. I ran. Back in my small apartment, sleep was impossible. The tree with its skeletal hands haunted my fitful dozing while the whispering words swirled in the silence. Was I losing my mind? The library had always held a strange allure. But this, this was something different, a power stirring to life within its walls. Returning to the stacks the next day, I steeled myself, half hoping the books had returned to their pristine emptiness. Of course, they hadn't. Now, even the shelves themselves seemed to shift and warp, shadows stretching like grasping claws. The crimson book was gone, vanished without a trace. I searched frantically, the once familiar stacks turning into a threatening labyrinth. That's when I found it, not another book, but a doorway shimmering in a corner where solid stone had been moments before. It pulsed with a sickly green light, and my instincts screamed to stay away. But reason had deserted me long ago. The air on the other side was cold and damp, carrying a metallic tang that clung to the back of my throat. I was in a smaller chamber, circular and bare, except for a stone table at the center. Upon it, lay a single open book and not one of the empty ones. This seemed older, the leather worn thin, as if touched by countless hands. The pages covered in a script unlike anything I'd yet encountered. And I knew it was waiting for me. My approach was hesitant, each step heavy. As I grew closer, the writing seemed to pulse and a wordless whisper echoed through the cold air. A name, a command, I shuddered, unable to tear my gaze from those inky symbols. Suddenly, the chamber swirled. The writing on the page bled outwards, tendrils of shadow, reaching for me. I lurched back, tripping and landing hard against the stone. The doorway shimmered and vanished, plunging me into darkness. When I could blink again, I was back in the library. Had it all been a hallucination, a waking nightmare, impossible. My arm throbbed where an inky mark now stained my skin, a tendril of shadow mirroring the writing from that. The library, my sanctuary, was now a trap. Where did that doorway lead? What other secrets might these books unleash? And what in the world was I meant to do about it? The days blurred together in a haze of paranoia and obsessive notes. My apartment became a paper fortress every scribbled word on napkins, receipts. My own skin, forming a frantic tapestry meant to decipher the library's secrets. Sleep was a fitful thing, stolen in exhausted snatches that left my mind buzzing with whispered fragments of unknown languages. Returning to the library felt inevitable, yet each step back through its silent halls made my stomach clench. The books watched me. I swore I could feel the whisper of their pages. Even when closed, a chorus of voices promising both revelation and ruin. The mark on my arm ached in time with the library's shifting pulse. It was no longer a simple tendril, but had begun to spread, delicate lines of inky black crawling up my skin, like a vine choked with thorns. I tried to hide it. Long sleeves, even in the summer heat, but the ache thrummed against the fabric like a second heartbeat. Desperate for answers, I started venturing beyond my familiar sections, losing myself in the sprawling maze of shelves. There was a system here, some twisted logic I couldn't yet grasp. In one dim corner, every book was bound in skin. Not leather, but something taut and pale, 
some even bearing crude stitching, like ragged scars. Another aisle throbbed with a sickly glow, the pages shimmering with iridescent inks that made my eyes water. And there were eyes, sometimes. Fleeting glimpses from the corner of my vision, shadows resolving into figures that melted away when I dared turn my head. Were they tricks of the light or something else the library now held within its depths? One evening, I stumbled upon a hidden alcove. Here, the shelves held no books, but objects. A tarnished silver locket, a broken clock frozen at five minutes to midnight, a child's wooden top stained ruby red, each pulsed with the now familiar whisper. When I reached out, a shard of ice pierced my gut, a sense of wrongness so profound it sent me staggering back. That night, for the first time, the book spoke to me in dreams. Not whispered words, but images. A city consumed by flames. A vast tree bathed in moonlight. Its leaves like emerald eyes. And always, the sense of a scale tipping perilously. Of something vast teetering on the edge of an abyss. I awoke with a scream echoing in my empty apartment. The library was no longer just a puzzle. It was a threat. But a threat to what? To me. To something larger than myself. The weight of it all became a suffocating pressure. The weight of it all became a suffocating pressure. The inky mark on my arm itching like a brand. The library had become a battlefield within my own mind. Each morning, I'd force leaden feet towards its doors. The weight of the spreading mark on my arm growing heavier with every step. Inside, it was a war between a desperate need for answers and a terror that threatened to shatter my sanity. The objects in the alcove became an obsession. They had power. I'd felt it in that gut. Punch of wrongness. If I could just understand what they were, the symbols they held. Perhaps then I could grasp the library's true purpose. My apartment became a cluttered mess, littered with sketches of the locket. The broken clock. A desperate attempt to understand their connection. My dreams grew more vivid. Not just images, but a sense of being watched. In one, I stood facing that vast, emerald-eyed tree. A sense of terrible anticipation hanging in the air. And below it, a figure wreathed in shadow. Its figure wreathed in shadow. Its face a blankness that screamed into my soul. I always woke drenched in sweat. My heart a frantic drumbeat that matched the pulse of the mark spreading up my skin. One evening, as the floating orbs cast their long shadows across the shelves, a sound pierced the usual silence. A woman's voice raised in a gasp of surprise. It wasn't a gasp of surprise. It wasn't a whisper, but it held a strange echo as if bouncing off the ancient stones. Driven by a mix of fear and desperate hope, I followed it. Rounding a corner, I collided with someone. I'm so sorry. She apologized, and froze. We were staring at each other, her eyes wide. Elias, she breathed, disbelief in her voice. Ava, it was my turn to be stunned. My childhood friend, the one who'd gotten away to a life beyond our sleepy town. She was older now, the girlish freckles replaced with the sharp angles of a driven woman. Somehow, She'd found me here, in this hidden labyrinth. What are you doing here? We said in unison, and then both laughed, the tension broken. Over mugs of lukewarm tea in my cramped apartment, she explained. Ava was a journalist. Scrappy, tenacious, always with a nose for a story. Rumors about a mysterious library, a place forgotten by time, had led her here. And then there you were. She finished, staring at me, the worry evident in her eyes. You look... Haunted, I supplied, gesturing to the dark smudges under my eyes, the half-healed scratches on my hands where frustration had met flesh. I hesitated, then showed her my arm. The mark was a gnarled thing now, reaching for my elbow. Her gasp was like a physical blow. When I told her everything, the writing, the door, the dreams, she didn't dismiss it as madness. 
Ava believed. And that belief was a lifeline I hadn't realized how desperately I needed. Ava was the jolt of energy I desperately needed. Before, the library had been a solitary battle. Now, it felt like maybe, just maybe, I wasn't facing the unknown completely alone, but there was a tension too. Ava was more than a lifeline. She was a walking, talking bullseye for whatever monstrous forces stirred beneath this place. In the harsh light of day, the objects in the alcove seemed less ominous, yet I couldn't shake their wrongness. Ava, ever the skeptic, took meticulous nodes and photos. Proof, she'd said firmly. If something happens, the world needs to know what's hidden here. Despite the risk, she joined my nightly forays into the shadows. Our system was clumsy at first. Flashlights, whispered questions, the frantic scribble of notes. Ava had questions, questions I didn't have answers to. Who built this place? Why were the books writing themselves now? And most importantly, one night, as we cataloged a section filled with books bound in what looked sickeningly like human skin, a scream echoed through the stacks. Elias, it was Ava, her voice tight with terror. We sprinted towards the sound, flashlights cutting through the gloom. I found her hunched between shelves, clutching her arm. Something touched me, she whispered, her eyes wide, like ice, but it burned. I pulled up her sleeve, revealing an angry red mark spreading across her wrist. It looked like a handprint, the fingers long and skeletal. Like the tree, I breathed, the image of its grasping branches rising in my mind. Back at my apartment, we pored over old maps and occult texts Ava had unearthed. One name kept surfacing, the custodian. Legend or an actual being, it was the library's rumored guardian a force tied to its very foundations. We need to find it, or him, or whatever the hell it is, Ava declared, a fierce glint in her eyes that ignited a spark of rebellion in me. Fear still clung, but there was anger stirring in the mix now. This entity had hurt my friend. Our search led us to the library's oldest wing. Dust hung heavy in the air here, and not even the floating orbs could fully pierce the gloom. As we delved deeper, a prickling sensation washed over me, like I was the one being observed, not the other way around. And then we saw it, an arched doorway, not of stone, but woven from gnarled roots and branches that pulsed in time with my heartbeat. This was older than the library itself. Prime Vol. Terror and reckless determination battled within me. It felt like the epicenter, the wellspring of the library's power. We shouldn't, I hissed at Ava. This place, it's a trap. And if it's the source of everything going wrong, Ava countered, don't you want to stop it? She didn't wait for an answer, but stepped towards the doorway. Its branches parted, beckoning her inward. I hesitated for one agonizing moment, then followed. I would not let her face whatever was within alone. Beyond lay a vast chamber, its floor not stone but earth, the ceiling a canopy of leaves that glittered with a cold, starlight luminescence. And beneath it stood the tree from my nightmares, its twisted form impossibly huge. Below its branches sat a figure cloaked in shadow, its face an empty void. You have disturbed the balance, a voice hissed, echoing through the chamber. It was everywhere and nowhere at once, chilling me to the bone. What balance? Ava demanded, her voice a thin thread against the vastness of the space. The stories are power. The custodian rasped, power held in check. You, you, your presence disrupts everything. Suddenly, the tree thrashed, branches whipping through the air. We stumbled back, the floor buckling beneath us. The custodian was no mere observer. It was the source of this power, and we. Chapter seven, echoes in the branches. Panic flared hot and bright. The ground shifted beneath my feet. 
roots surging upwards like serpents. The tree's cavernous branches snap towards us, skeletal fingers reaching to pluck us from the unsteady earth. Run, I yelled, but the word was lost in the custodian's chilling laughter. It reverberated in the chamber, shaking the very air. Ava sprinted towards the only visible exit, the archway of gnarled roots we'd entered through. I stumbled after her, the tree's roots coiling around my ankles. With a desperate surge, I broke free, the force of it sending me tumbling to the floor. The tree's branches whipped past, barely missing me, the air humming with their deadly power. The doorway felt impossibly far away as the earth behind us split open, yawning black fissures, releasing a disorienting chill. The air itself seemed to crackle, and suddenly, it felt hard to breathe, like my lungs were struggling to pull oxygen from a space that was no longer hospitable. Elias, hurry, Ava screamed, half in and half out of the archway. I scrambled forward, the rough bark scraping my palms. The tree roared, a sound that resonated not just in my ears, but in my very bones. And then the unthinkable. The roots of the archway throbbed, and with terrifying slowness, began to seal shut. My heart hammered a frantic rhythm against my ribs. The library, my haven, had turned into a monstrous cage. No, this was worse than a cage. It felt like a tomb. Through the rapidly narrowing gap, I saw Ava on the other side. Her outstretched hand seemed both within reach and impossibly distant. The cold from below intensified, numbing me as despair clawed at my throat. With a final, desperate lunge, I threw myself at the archway. It wasn't enough. Rough roots slammed together, severing me from Ava's terrified scream. The world lurched sickeningly, and I was plunged into suffocating darkness. When the disorienting spin finally ceased, and my eyes adjusted, I found myself on the library floor my body trembling as if I still felt the tremor of the custodian's power, where the archway had shimmered moments earlier. There was nothing but solid stone. Had it even been real? Elias, Ava's voice. But it was muffled, distant. Panic squeezed my chest. I scrambled up, searching wildly for any sign of her, any flicker of that shimmering doorway. Nothing. Had she gotten away? Or was she trapped on the other side? The uncertainty felt almost worse than the crushing despair of a moment earlier. A wave of nausea washed over me, and my vision flickered. The inky mark on my arm burned, and from its edges, tendrils spread rapidly, branching like veins towards my heart. No, I wouldn't let it. Not now. I staggered towards the section where I'd first found the writing books. I needed answers, or at least a way to fight back. The books pulsed, the once incoherent whispers now blending into a dissonant chorus. Their pages seemed to ripple with an energy that set my teeth on edge. As I neared, a sense of resistance pushed against me, a pressure heavier than air. Ignoring the burning in my arm, I reached out and snatched a book from the shelf. It was bound in smooth, dark leather, its pages radiating an icy chill. With trembling hands, I flipped it open. The text swam before my eyes. The familiar, elegant script replaced by jagged symbols that seemed to sear themselves into my brain. Head pounding, I slammed the book shut, even closed. It thrummed with malevolent energy. The room spun and my knees buckled. I managed to slump against the shelves, gasping for breath. How long had I been out, long enough for the nausea to ebb? Though my head still ached, and the inky tendrils had spread alarmingly closer to my shoulder. Time was both my enemy and the only weapon I had left. Gritting my teeth, I forced myself to focus. There was a system here, a warped logic. Perhaps these new books were the key. If only I could decipher them before the spreading corruption consumed me entirely. My fingers traced the twisting patterns spreading up my arm, the ink a chilling counterpoint to the fading bruise on Ava's wrist.
Time was no longer measured in the familiar rhythm of the library, but in the steady encroachment of this black corruption. The malevolent book lay at my feet, a mocking testament to my failure. I couldn't decipher the symbols, but their wrongness seeped into the room. Shadows writhed even in the unwavering glow of the orbs, and the usual whispering of the books had sharpened. A hiss at the edge of hearing. The library itself was changing, becoming a reflection of the poison in my veins. A chill permeated the air, unnatural in this place that had never known seasons. I needed answers, but more importantly, I needed a way out, a way to save Ava. If she was even still alive, the inky stain on my skin pulsed faster. Pain shot up my arm, leaving it trembling. Had the custodian somehow marked me, bound me to its power. A flicker of movement snagged my gaze, a rat scrambling from beneath a shelf. But as it crossed a patch of moonlight, its shadow was monstrous, twisted. It vanished down a hole I hadn't noticed before. Desperate and more than a little terrified, I forced myself to my knees. The hole gaped in the ancient stone. It seemed too smooth, too intentional to be natural. With a shudder, I lowered myself into the darkness, the book clutched in my good hand. The passage was stiflingly close, bare earth against my skin. The inky mark pulsed like a frantic heartbeat. Was I burrowing deeper into my own corruption? The thought brought me to a shuddering halt, and I clung to the rough floor, gasping for air that tasted of dust and old stone. Something shifted ahead, a soft exhalation that wasn't my own. Terror and icy determination battled within me. I inched forward. The passage opened into a small chamber, barely large enough to turn around in. Roots snaked through cracks in the earth, and a pale, sickly luminescence flickered off the stone. And in the center nestled atop a crude mound of dirt. The objects from the alcove, the locket, the clock, the child's top, they pulsed with the same energy I felt in the books, the air around them vibrating. I reached for the locket, my fingers ghosting over cool silver. The tarnished surface seemed to ripple, images flashing briefly beneath my touch, a woman weeping, flames devouring a city, the tree with its hungry branches. Stop. The voice seemed to come from the walls themselves, a dry, rustling whisper, a hulking figure stirred in the shadows, its form woven not of flesh and bone, but the same gnarled branches as the custodian's tree. Fear warred with desperation. Who are you? A fragment, it rasped, a keeper of sorts. Each word carried an echo of countless rustling leaves. The custodian, I realized, these objects, the tree. They're the source of its power. The figure tilted its branch like head. They're anchors, portals through which the stories flow. The balance is broken, I finished. The spreading corruption on my arm was a grim confirmation. But why? The library's been here for ages. Time, unnatural here, it whispered. Hope flared then died as it continued. To restore order, the anchors must. Must be destroyed, I finished. The locket feeling suddenly hot in my hand. But how? What could destroy something infused with the library's very essence? Fire, the branch, creature rasped. My breath hitched. Willing self-sacrifice was a far cry from certain doom. There must be another way, I rasped, my voice raw. Silence stretched long. Then it moved, the scrape of branches against earth, making my skin crawl. It placed a twisted root, hand onto the locket. No other way. The locket thrummed under its touch. I saw it then, not tarnished silver, but a shell holding back a writhing black energy. My vision swam, and those tendrils on my arm burned not with poison, but tethered to something far worse. 
I slammed my eyes shut against the wave of dizziness. No, I wouldn't give in, wouldn't become the conduit for whatever monstrous power lurked within. I won't let you use me. The words tore from my throat. Wrenching the locket away, I fumbled for the book I'd carried with me. The keeper moved with terrifying speed, branches whipping out. I barely rolled away, the rough bark grazing my skin. I slammed the book against the earthen floor. The impact sent out a shuddering wave, and cracks snaked across the chamber. The glow faltered, and the air thrummed with a strange tension. Had I broken something? The keeper lurched back, a hissing sound tearing from its branch. Throat. But hope was swiftly followed by despair as the mark on my arm exploded with pain, the tendrils snaking towards my heart with renewed fervor. No time left. I clutched the locket and the book to my chest. This chamber held the key to it all, some linchpin in the library's intricate workings. With a desperate surge, I hurled myself towards the crack in the wall, the one the rat had escaped through. The world dissolved into blinding pain and overwhelming noise. The hissing whispers of the library, the dry rasp of the branch, keeper, the relentless drumbeat of my corrupted heart. It all crescendoed into a cacophony that threatened to shatter my sanity. And then, silence, blessed. Impossible silence. I lay sprawled on cold stone, the pulse of my corrupted arm a dull throb. I was. Sunlight, weak and watery, pierced the dense canopy of trees encircling me. Regular trees, their branches swaying in the breeze, birdsong filling the air. I blinked, disoriented, then bolted upright. The locket and the book lay beside me. The tendrils on my arm had receded. Though the mark itself remained a livid scar, had it. I staggered to my feet, my movements clumsy. Elias? The voice was a breathy whisper. Ava. I thought you were. I tried to speak, but the words caught in my throat. She ran to me, the joy in her eyes a balm to my wounded soul. How did you? I pulled up my sleeve, revealing the scar. I'd explain everything, tell her about the monstrous library, the tree, the keeper, and the sacrifice it had demanded. But first, come on, I said, offering her my hand. Let's go home. The library held secrets yet, its shadowed corners whispering of unfinished tales. But as I walked away, the locket and book tucked under my uncorrupted arm, I knew some stories were better left unwritten. Their pages closed forever. It was time to start a new chapter, one written in the warm glow of the sun, not the haunted light of a place untouched by time. Thanks for listening. If you like the story, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to your comments. See you in the next video.